Uh, hello, kids. This is Grumpy. Welcome back. Hey, uh, today we're going to take another look at an unboxing of some gear. Uh, I can't show you the front. I can't show you who it's from. I like to tease them, but uh, too much pertinent information all over this one. Anyway, uh, I know you missed the gazelles. You wanted to see them again. I haven't found a new background yet, so uh, you know the knife. You love the knife. Uh, let me just get it out of here. Stop playing around. Stop messing around already. Anyway, Asher Knife Company. This is my first knife from Asher. Uh, I had heard good things about them, and I was excited to try out one of their knives. And every time I went to their site, it was not in. So I happened to see uh, another YouTube content producer, Hey Jack, cover one of these knives. And I went to look, not this particular model, but I went to look at the site, and I remembered that I wanted this model. Paid an extra little bit to get a deep carry pocket clip. You get some extra springs in there. If you know what those are, you know where we're headed. And then the actual knife itself. I tell you what, let's get this stuff back in here. I'll put that clip on definitely. So let's set you up there. Um, anyway, this is the Sentry V2.0. Um, as you can tell, an axis lock. That's what the springs were for there in the box. Thumb stud deployment. Um, or access lock, I would assume. Oh, it's already got a deep carry clip on it. I thought it came with a different one. Huh? Oh well, no worries. I got an oh, I got an extra one now. I am new to the access lock world, folks. If you can't tell. Anyway, uh, this is just a um, an unboxing. Not a review. I'll be back in a couple days. I'll do a day two review on this and give you some more specs and stuff like that. Well, hello, kids. Welcome back. Hey, two days later? Not really. It's actually been uh, about three weeks, but uh, I have not had a chance to spend, uh, until now, to spend a whole lot of time with this. In the meantime, got a new background, as you can see. Um... I think I figured out what's making the buzz that I can hear while I'm editing. I don't know if you guys can, but hopefully we don't hear it again. And anyway, let's get back to this. <clears throat> As usual, I'll put the stats up here so you guys can follow along. Freeze frame if you need to know some of the data. And we'll jump in to hit the high points of those stats with this. Do a little bit of comparison. I'll tell you what I think about this, and we'll get you guys on your way. Don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm trying to start whittling these down to get them to down more like five, six minutes. So enough prattling already. Let's get out our ruler, our Wazoo Survival Gear slap ruler. Anyway. Overall length of 7.4 inches and a blade of 3.2. Blade stock is 0 0.09, so nine hundredths of an inch, less than a tenth of an inch thick, and it did, uh, I put the calipers on it and it did measure up. Um, is a harpoon blade as we can see s35bn stone washed a little bit of billboarding there with the uh, asher knives logo other side no major billboarding except for let's see if we can get a focus anyway it says s35bn up there i gotta get some some better camera gear, some better lighting, something. Anyway, sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, very little billboarding on this, which is nice. Nice old logo, that's it. <clears throat> this thing did not come super duper sharp. It's got a nice toothy edge that, you know, does the basic cutting things. I'm probably going to wear the edge that's on it out fairly quickly and get to put one of my edges on it. But, uh... Anyway, back to this uh, flat ground, kind of a medium saber grind, or a medium flat grind, saber grind, whatever you want to call it. Um, stone washed, the liners, all of the hardware, the uh, filler plate 
with by the way flush screws one of the uh, you're not wanting to play the autofocus game very well today okay there we go flat screws on the filler plate got a nice low pro uh, stone wash stainless steel clip it does have uh, it is flush mounted the screws themselves on that side do not countersink you can see that white G10 backspacer, gray G10 handles, access style lock, which we covered in the unbox. Um, yeah, this thing weighs, what is it, 3.54 is what they claimed. I actually weighed it in at 3.36 ounces. Um, yeah, this thing in pocket, it's 4.2 ounces closed. See how that, yeah, that checks. Um, it is ambidextrous as far as right or left, but it is tip up only carry as far as the pocket clip, uh, ambidextrous open because of that access style lock. Yeah. Um, this thing is made in Hong Kong. So if you're one of those people who has an issue with Chinese knives, uh, you know, I probably ought to start saying that right at the very beginning and save y'all time. But uh, I haven't had a chance to check out the S35VN on this. Uh, like I said, it's only, it's been a couple weeks, but I haven't really had a chance to use it until this weekend. So this is it. Uh, get this out of the way we'll throw a few knives up here for you to take a look which hot ow there we go crawford casper we'll skip the roxy today go straight into spiderland 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 hey uh sorry started to wander off there uh you can see both of these guys make uh small work of the the century completely unnecessarily large the Crawford Casper um, I tell you what let's replace a CRKT with a, another CRKT that I think is actually going to be a good comp and it is overall same length and this one's going to carry a lot wider in the pocket and I'll tell you what um, let's get this out of the way too it'll be right back because what we're going to look at right now is how thin that overland is let's say can we see there not a whole lot difference between the two um, I haven't stuck a caliper on each of these individually to see what they are but I they feel roughly the same thickness in my hand so and then let's I'll tell you what we'll just use the, the pair of three so we can see how much thicker that pair of three is now compared to that sentry. This yeah, feels quite a bit thicker too. <coughs> so yeah, that uh, the PM3, sorry, pair of three PM3. I forget which one the three goes by anyway. Is exactly same length. Sage five, ever so slightly shorter. Um. I tell you what, let's leave that pair of three out there. Let's let's get to the heart of the matter with the ones that really, really line up with this well. And that is the Topps MSF 4.0 Mini Scandi Folder. And the Sincut Sidious. Um, these four knives, all pretty much exactly the same length. This one carries wider. These two carry almost exactly the same width. This one carries narrower this way. This one carries narrower this way than all of them. Um, the only one that comes even remotely close, and actually, I think they are about the same. There we go. Yeah, the scales are thinner on this, but the liners and the blade stock are thicker so I think they're about the same so give you a very good idea of how those were how this lines up and you know I mean I can keep going through comparison knives a bit these are uh, I tell you what let's get the there's one more I'm 
almost forgot to bring in. That steel wheel lantern carries thicker as far as this way, but overall very similarly in the pocket. Um, these three feel nearly identical to me in the pocket. Um, these two feel slightly different, but well, this one feels quite a bit different actually. But it gives you an idea. The uh, Para 3 feels enough like that that I think you, if you don't have any problem with the Para 3 or if the Para 3 is a little too you know, wide this way for you and you want something narrower, I think you'd be very happy with something like this or any one of these, right? Any of these would be fine, but this would be, uh, this is definitely the fidgetiest knife on the table. Uh, if fidgety is your thing, I mean, this is probably maybe a little bit more fidgety. Um, I'm still getting used to the axis lock, so, uh, but that'll give you an idea. You know, a little bit longer than the sway back. Um, and then let's get these guys out of here and show you what it looks like in the final comparison, which is to say is part of my EDC rotation. And we'll get one of the small guys out. And then we'll get that, get that fixed blade out. So, that's what it would look like running with the mice. And, uh, tell you what, is the other small. If we want to go different route, this is the other option. So the Spyderco Little Native and the Artisan Sea Snake. That's another EDC trifecta that it might come about. Or The SE Azula, man, look at that gleaming edge. Wah. So, this is another option. I mean, this, this is kind of giving you an idea of what my EDC carry would look like uh, with that Asher Sentry mixed in. In the mix. Get that stuff out of the way. But, so far, very, very happy with it. No blade play. No up and down play. Lock is so far not given any sign of failure. It's done a little bit of, you know, food cutting, you know, uh, sort of stuff and opening boxes here and there. That's about it. Opening bags and stuff like that. Uh, I fidget with it mostly, to be honest. That has been its main, uh, main job in my pocket for the last few days. But that's what I got for you. This thing has been rock solid. I got no reason to not recommend this as uh, uh, still right up the middle. No problems there. I love the mechanical sound of this thing. I don't know if you hear that little whoop, whoop, whoop when it opens and closes. But uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's an awesome little piece so far. Uh, I've really enjoyed this thing. I think uh, anybody who likes a, an Axis style lock, a Harpoon Blade S35VN, you're okay with G10. Um, you know, a nice clip, not a perfect, you know. There's always tiny, tiny things that are room for improvement, but from everything I've heard, um, They've responded to requests and, you know, uh, people in the knife and EDC community telling them about things they'd like to see. And they've responded by making changes in between runs and coming out with, um, you know, the, um, the flat here, putting bearings inside. By the way, this thing does rain, run on brass cage ceramic bearings. Um, so if that's something that's important to you, uh, previous versions apparently ran on washers, but 
Yeah, it's been a really nice carry so far. It carries really easily. And uh, fidgety, just so far been a pleasure. I've, I've been really happy with it. So I'll be back with a long term on this one. Definitely, it's going to start spending some good time in the pocket. Um, and uh, I'll be back with something long term to let you know how it stands up to the beating I'm going to deal out to it. And uh, we'll be back then. Hopefully I'll see you again. I appreciate you coming by and watching. Until then, stay well, be kind, do good. This is Gigi. I'm out.